1 and 14. Because I want to show you something. Because in the churches, right, you said you didn't, you've been in a church, right? Right? You've been in the church. What does Christ look like? Because this is very important. I'm about to touch on something. What does Christ look like? Which one of these images is Christ? There's no definition of Christ. There's no, you said there's no definition of Christ. Nobody knows what he looks like. Okay, what do you say, Lotus? Say it again. None of these ones. Which one? Which one? Uh, you said, Jake, you said this one, Lotus, you pointed to this one too? Okay, let's prove it in the Bible. Let me show you real quick. Read that. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Christ's head and hairs are white like wool. What people have woolly hair? Lotus, what people have woolly hair? Black people have woolly hair. Read. As white as snow. And his eyes were as the flame of fire, uh -huh. and his feet unto fine brass. So what color is brass? Huh? Brown? Okay. As if it what? As if they burn in a furnace. So Christ was brown, but so brown like he was burnt in a furnace. He was a dark-skinned black man walking this earth. Right. right. He came from the tribe of Judah. Right. right. Same tribe that, what, what, are you African-American? Christ came from the same tribe as you. The same tribe. From the tribe of Judah. What are you, Mexican? You come from the tribe of Instagram. That's not too much now. We're going to Israelites according to the Bible. Right? Now give me a um, Proverbs 3 and 31. Right? Because I touched on the point that God has white, woolly hair. Christ has white, woolly hair. Okay, but guess what? What do a lot of our sisters like to do to their hair? Bring it up! Notice, what do a lot of our sisters like to do to their hair? Perm it, what else? Bring it out. Straighten it, what else? Dye it. Why would a sister want to dye her hair? Bring it out. You don't know, why did you dye your hair, sis? You like the colors? I'm going to show you why you dyed your hair, sis. Because a lot of us, we do something subconsciously. A lot of the visuals we see, we see the other nations. They put the picture, they put the, they control, or they dictate what's beauty. What our people should be following after. How we should look. What our hair color should look like. How our hair texture should look like. Right? America, our enemies, they, they teach us that through media, social media, TV, television shows, movies, music. They teach us those things. And they always teach us against what is written in the Bible. Right? So I'm going to read you something. I'm going to show you why. You might not know it consciously, but this is what you're thinking in your mind. Because I, listen, I used to have blonde hair in my head. I used to have dreads with blonde hair in my head. Because I didn't know. I was looking at an image that did not belong, that was against the Bible. Right. Read Proverbs 3.31. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Uh -huh. Envy not, excuse me, envy thou not the oppressor. So God said, do not envy your oppressor. Right. Do we have oppressors, Jake? Notice. Who's our oppressor? Bring it up. You said the government, who's our oppressor? Say a lot of people. Okay, now, now name one person. Put, the, put, a, put a face to it. Go to verse 48. Deuteronomy 28, 48. I want you to look at this. What did you say? Temptation? Okay. But what? God said, it be not the oppressor. Meaning someone had to put the images on the TV. Someone had to advertise what uh, beauty looks like. That's right. So who put that? Who put those images there? Who put those in our minds? The media, who controls the media, sis? Who? The white man, sis, don't be afraid to say it. Don't be afraid to say it because guess what? The same, the same white man that told us what beauty looks like, guess what? They put us in slavery on slave ship. Read what? that. Deuteronomy. All right, 28, 48. Author. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. We're, we're gonna find out real quick who our oppressor is. Read. Therefore shall thou serve thy enemy. Another word for enemy is our oppressor. So God said the blacks, Hispanics, Israelite, they got enemies. They have oppressors. Read. Which the Lord shall sin against thee uh -huh. in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. So who do we have to go to for, for clothes, for food and water? Who do we go to? Huh? God? So God is giving you, God is handing you water? Who? Yeah, who, who do we have to go to? Where do you go shopping? The store. What name of store do you like to go to shop at for your food? And for your water? You go to, what, where you go? Walmart. Does the black man own Walmart? So guess what, who do we go to food for? The, our oppressors, the white man, right? Jake, you wear clothes, right? What type of clothes, where do you like to shop at to get your clothes? 
The mall, right? Like, what's the mall around here? What's the mall you like to go to? Chula Vista Mall or what? Which one? Say it again. Plaza Bonita. Do black and Hispanic own the Plaza Bonita Mall shop? Bring it out. That, no, I, I know so. They don't. Sure. They don't own them. But guess what? Wow. Where do we go? To our enemies to get clothes, food, and water. Now read the next part. Well, this is the image of beauty. This is where we get our beauty from. Read. And in want of all things. So guess what? The picture we have in our mind for beauty, the picture of our mind, how we should conduct ourselves, how we should look, guess what? We go to our enemies for that. Those are the oh. people who put, say, oh, dye your hair, perm your hair, cut off your hair, put a wig on. Get rid of that natural woolly hair that Christ has. Bring it out! Our oppressors told us that. How do they tell us? Through their media. Through who they put to say that's beautiful. Guess what? Because guess what, sis? Our sisters that are that are famous, like you, you see the Beyonce's, the Nicki Minaj, um, who else? Who you got? Cardi B. Do they do they rock their natural woolly hair? No. They got blonde, straight hair, they perm their hair, or they go get a wig and they change the way they look. Run. So guess what? We got younger sisters look up to them and say, that's beauty. I want to look like that. But they never read in the Bible that Christ had white woolly hair. Right. They never knew that the God, the King of Kings looks like us. That's and that we right. should be modeling or look like Christ or God. Right? Give me what you got. Yeah, Author no. Beauty? Yeah, no. Look what the Bible says because guess what? America, the white man, our enemies teaches us what beauty is. Right? But who was the first author of beauty? God is. Right? So read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 3. And that's the part. I know I'm talking about the sister, about the hair, but it's important for the man too. All right, Jake, because I want you to pay attention to it. Because a lot of our men, right, a lot of our image, our standards, the way we, the reason why we want to change the way we look, because guess what? Blacks and Hispanics, we have low self-esteem. Right. We hate the way we look. Bring it out. Our people hate the way they look. That's why we try to change the way we look. That's why we, the sisters want to. That's why sisters want to change their hair. They want to dye their hair, perm their hair. And I'm not. I'm not doing this to belittle you, sis. I'm just trying to let you know the way our people think. We have low self-esteem. We look to the other nations for beauty. But guess what? God is the first author of beauty. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 3. Uh -huh. Without beauty, if they be delighted, took them to be gods. Uh -huh. Let them know how much better the Lord of them is. For the first author of beauty has created them. So God is the first author of beauty. Not the one, not this guy right here. He is not the first author of beauty. He's the first author of evil. Right. He's the devil the Bible speaks of. Right. 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 Him and his people are the devil the Bible speaks of. Right. They are our enemies and they are our oppressors. Right. They are not to be looked at for the image of beauty. Right. God is the author of beauty. So guess what, sis? What should you do? Knowing that Christ is a white, uh, has white woolly hair, a black man, right? Don't you think we should try to look like Christ? Right. It doesn't, you say it doesn't matter? Why don't you think it matters the way we look? Bring it out! Yeah, physically. But guess what? God said he's the author of beauty. When we look at beauty, it's what? How do we see beauty first? With our what? With our eyes. So if we want to follow after God's standard, we see with our eyes first, right? So meaning if we want to see what, what God looks like, right? What Christ looks like, right? And we want to see that, because we can't see God in Christ right now, can you? They're not walking this earth. We look at each other. We got to look at our own brothers and sisters and be like, that's the author of beauty. Right. When you see a black man with a beard on, woolly hair, that's the author of beauty. When you sit, see right. a sister with na her natural uh, woolly hair, that's the author of beauty. Right. But guess what? Like I said before, we have low self-esteem. Bring it out. You, you get little black girls who say, I don't want to be black no more. And guess what they like to do? They want to change their hair and they want to make their skin white. Right. right. That's what happens to our sisters. They hate who they are. It's a form of self-hatred. Right. Right? Finish what you got. Give me, finish Rock 30, really, and then give me some Rock 30 about love that own self. Because it's a problem in our community. We, if we hate ourselves, guess what? You're going to see us still at the bottom. Say that. We want to change the way we look. We want to go off another nation's beauty, another nation's standards of beauty. Read right. that. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Right. Envy, thou, not the oppressor. So that's what happens. We start to envy our oppressor because we have no standard. Our standard is not the Bible. If we understood the standard of God's beauty, we wouldn't envy our oppressors. If we understood, since if you understood you were an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, you wouldn't envy the oppressor. Right, Reed? Hey. And choose none of his ways. Oh. 
we're ju keeping this. We did again. First, we're verse Judah. 31. They and beauty. thou not the oppressor, yeah, and choose, no. choose none of his ways. Uh -huh. So we're not supposed to choose any other way. The way America tells us to dye their hair, dye our hair, perm our hair, put wigs on, destroy your natural hair. Yah said don't choose those ways. Now give me Sirach 30, 23. Sirach chapter 30, verse 23. And if you're not confined, where Judah was uh, beauty and all the nations uh, marveled. Read that. Sirach chapter 30, verse 21. 23. 23. Uh -huh. Love thy own soul. So, sis, notice. God said you gotta love thy own soul. What does that mean? That means if God's the first author of beauty and he created you the way he created you with woolly hair, why would you change them? 1019. Why, why would you change that, sis? Why would you change the way you look if God is the first author of beauty? Say, huh? I'll, I'll, I'm gonna read it again, sis. Sirach chapter 30, verse 23. Uh -huh. Love thy own soul. So God said, love your own soul. Love the way you look. Love the way God made you. That's what God said to do. Right. But when we go, when we go out, when we leave the standard of the Bible, and we look at the oppressors, we try to change our standards and want to be like them. That's why we continue to kill each other. That's why we look at each other and shoot each other down. That's, right. that's why we're willing to sell drugs to each other. Right. That's why we are abort our babies. It's because we don't love ourselves. Right. That starts with us thinking, you know what? I got to love myself the way God made me. Now give me Judah 10, 19. I'm going to show you the example. Because guess what? Back in, the, back in the day, all the other nations looked at our sisters as a beauty. As beauty. The black woman was the standard of beauty across the earth. Uh, the right, black woman right. today is not the standard of beauty today. Get out. It's the white woman with, white, with blonde flowy hair. Right. That's the standard of beauty now. Right. But read this. Judah chapter 10 verse 19. Uh -huh. And they wonder at her beauty. So this is this is our foremother Judith. Right. That said that other nations they wondered at her beauty. They're like damn. Look at that Israelite sister right there. They're like dang. She bad. That's how they was looking at our sister. Right. We was a standard of beauty. Continue reading. And admire the children of Israel. So I said, and admire the children of Israel. Right. So it wasn't just Judith that was a standard of beauty. It was all the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. We were the standard right. of beauty, sis. You know why? Because they understood that Christ had woolly hair. Right. They understood that Christ was black. They understood that God was black. We understood that as a nation of people. We didn't look at the Moabites who are the Chinese today. We didn't look at the Edomites who is the white man today and look for them for beauty. No, they looked at our people for the standard of beauty. But guess what, today, now we look at the other nations. It's because we're destroyed as a people. Go back, uh, finish that off. Because of her, and everyone said to his neighbor, uh -huh. who would despise this people? So guess what, the other nations were looking at each other like, dang, who can hate the black, Hispanic, and Native Americans? Right. Who can hate the Israelites? They beauty above all beauty. Yeah. Have, we admire the way they look. That's how they looked at. That's how the other nations looked at us. But today we hate ourselves. We hate the way we look. Right? Continue reading. That have among them such women. Surely it is not good that one man of them be left. Right. So it said among the women. So guess what? Do a lot of do a lot of black men and Spanish men today, do they marry their own people? Why? Why doesn't the black man wear the black right, woman so, no more? Uh, just stay right here with the camera and wait for all the What's this? You know, I know you know, sis. I know you have other women in your life. There's other men in your life that you know that won't marry their own people. Jake, you know some uh, other Mexicans that won't marry other Mexican women? They'll rather, they'll rather marry the white woman. Or they'll marry the right Chinese woman. Bring it up. Why? Because we got to a point so we, we got to a point so far to where our women they hate themselves and they change the way they look, right? They change the, their natural their natural beauty. And so guess what? The black man, the Hispanic man, they're like, you know what? Let me go to the other nation. Let me go marry a white woman. Let me go have kids with a white woman. Let me all have kids with a, the East India woman or the Chinese woman. That's what happens. It's because it starts from the simple fact of us not loving ourselves, us not knowing that we're we're the standard of beauty. God made us the standard of beauty. Give me Psalm of Solomon 1 and 5. Because it's throughout the Bible, sis. Our people were beauty. We were black and beautiful. Who said that? Our people say, well, you know that term? They say, guess what? The sisters say, I'm black and beautiful. Right? Guess what? Guess where that comes from, sis? Guess where that comes from, sis? What do you think that saying, black and beautiful, comes from? I'm going to show you. Read that. 
This is the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. Uh -huh. I am black. So this is King Solomon. He was a son of King David. Jesus, Jesus descended from the line of King Solomon. Yes. Royalty. Israelites from the tribe of Judah. The same bloodline you come from, sis. Read it again. I am black, but humbly. So Solomon said, I am black. A lot of our sisters, a lot of our brothers hate the fact that they're black. If you go to the islands, guess what they're doing? They're getting white, uh, skin whitening cream and trying to make themselves white. Because they hate the way their skin is. Because guess what? America taught them that white is beautiful and black is ugly and dirty and evil. Right. So we hate that thing. We start to hate ourselves, but God said, love your own soul. Solomon loved the way he looked. Read it again. I am black, but comely. He said, I'm black, but comely. Comely means what, sis? Beautiful. So that's why people get that term from when they say, I'm black and beautiful. They get it from King Solomon. Because guess what? The Israelites, we were the standard of beauty. We loved the way we looked. Right. So guess what, sis? When we dye our hair, when we change the texture of our hair, when we want to change the color, when we want to cut it off and put a wig on and look like the other nations, we're envying our oppressed. That shows that we don't love each other, sis. Right. So guess what? Uh, John 8, uh, Psalm 19 and 7. Right? So this is how we fix it, sis. Because we're going to show you that it's a problem in us. You see it among other sisters, other women in our community. They hate their way they look, so they change it. But guess what? God has a solution for that. Read. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. Huh? The law of the Lord is perfect. So God said his laws that are written in the Bible that the church has never taught us. Our parents never taught us God's laws and commandments. Read it again. The law of the Lord is perfect. So God said his laws are perfect. Are perfect. So guess what? When we read laws like envy, I mean, not that our person, that's a perfect law. When we read the law that says, love thyself, right? Love thy own soul. That's a perfect law. Read. Converting the soul. So guess what? You got to convert the way you think, sis. You got to understand that black is beautiful. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.